open wheel racing. One of the most competitive and well-loved disciplines in all of motorsport is sometimes referred to as wings and slicks racing. Front and rear wings generate massive amounts of downforce with a meticulously sculpted chassis finished by highly developed slick tyres to ensure that these cars have the ultimate stability and cornering performance. You see this formula in all forms of open wheel racing. Formula 3, Formula 4, the road to Indy and of course Formula 1 itself. And yet, one of the world's most iconic and well-loved open wheel series does not follow this formula. Downforce? Never heard of them, eh? The Ray Formula 1600 has been scanned and introduced at the beginning of the 2023 Season 2 build, making it the latest in a recent push by iRacing on flushing out their open wheel lineup on the sim. Weighing in at just 500 kilograms and powered by a 1.6 litre Ford Ken engine producing 116 horsepower, the car has more than enough power to weight to keep the driver entertained, especially with how it drives through the corners. Sliding on 13-inch Avon tyres, the car moves around a ton in the corners, especially whilst they are coming up to temperature in the opening two or three laps of the run. Like the Skip Barber, it requires a smidge of slip angle through the corners to maximise its potential, which is incredibly fun and addictive. When you overstep the mark, the car is reasonably forgiving as long as you're on the loud pedal. The car naturally does not feature any driver assists, but still, you'd have to be severely overdriving the car or competing with an extremely far forward brake bias to lock up a brake into most corners. Speaking of car setup, there is nothing too scary to learn in the garage of this car. Basic adjustments like camber, spring rates, tow angles and anti-roll bar changes are all possible, as well as damper, compression and rebound for those looking for that little bit more compliance over the kerbs and rougher surfaces. Changing the in-car MoTeC display colour is also possible, which is arguably something iRacing should patch and make unchangeable, because of course we all know the purple MoTeC display colour is a significant performance advantage. The car uses a Hewland LD200 4-speed gearbox, which is, in short, a dog box. This requires a throttle release blip on the upshifts, you can use the clutch if you feel like it, however, it is not required, but this is something that can catch out many drivers taking their first laps in this car. The raceability of this car is phenomenal and a significant hallmark of why this car is so popular in motorsport across the globe. The car sucks up into the drafts very well, allowing battle packs to form around circuits with large straights. With the low power of the Ford engine, once a driver pulls out of the drafts though, they'll often get hit with the wall of air resistance, meaning they quickly lose their gain momentum from the draft. This generates many side-by-side -side moments into braking zones for the drivers to contend with. If the overlap going into the corner is sufficient, passes around the outside of corners are even possible and they're not a rarity. This is where the lack of downforce in these cars comes into play. The mechanical grip allows drivers to challenge each other everywhere on the racing circuit and not being forced into a single line like you see with so many other open wheel disciplines. With these cars' narrow chassis but large track width, interlocking wheels can be a problem so ensuring you leave your competitors enough room will be vital for your survival. With the tyres being entirely uncovered and not shielded by even a side pod behind it, wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact often leads to a driver getting flipped over and having their race ended on the spot. That is partially down to the new damage model being enabled on this vehicle, meaning taking care of your machinery will be critical. Knocking off a nose cone will significantly impact your straight line speed, so dance around the circuit respectfully or face the consequences. That said, I do find like many other recent damage model implementations, the tyres are surprisingly tricky to rip off. You can bend the suspension, ruin your alignment and do many other things, but ripping the wheel off entirely will take a severe impact compared to what you might expect in the real world. Getting you all to drive this new car shouldn't take too much convincing, especially given that it is free to all members on the iRacing service. Even if you don't intend on ever racing this car, I could not recommend enough trying it for a couple of laps just for a good laugh. I can promise you'll be giggling like a schoolgirl dancing through some of the higher speed corners on the throttle sideways. 
In an era of racing where efficiency, looking after tyres and being smooth and precise is king, it's refreshing to have a psychopath of a car every now and then that makes you work the steering wheel like a dirt sprint car. I've been a critic of iRacing's push to have nearly every single seater in the world recently. I've said that we have too many, and that the junior open wheel classes on iRacing are too diverse and it's split up the open wheel community too much. But you know what? When we get cars like the Formula Ford onto the service, maybe, just maybe, I need to rethink my standpoint.